Hi guys, welcome to a small tutorial series on making a mobile slash RPG style hero which will include a combat system and the use of abilities. In this video, I'll start from the very beginning with the character movement which is done by clicking on the terrain and having the player move to that location. I've downloaded some assets from the asset store that I'll be using throughout the series. The link to the character and environment assets will be down in the description, but feel free to use your own assets if you do have any. Anyways, to begin we're going to open up a simple scene given from the environment asset. I'm going to save it as a new scene and open it up separately. The first thing we're going to do is adjust the camera position and rotation to give it a top down view. You can use my settings as well if you wish, but this is totally up to you and whatever you feel comfortable with. Then we're going to create a script for the camera and call it camera follow. This script will allow the camera to always follow the character no matter where the player goes. But before we do that, we're going to bake our terrain so that Unity knows that we'll be using the nav mesh system. Going to the navigation tab, we're going to click on bake and wait a few seconds. Now in the window scene, you should have a terrain covered in blue geometry. The blue parts are where the player will be able to move. After that, we'll import our character slash player prefab from the asset files and pretty much adjust its position in the map to suit where the camera is placed. Again, you can use my settings if you wish or whatever you feel most comfortable with. Also, you gotta make sure since we're going to be working with a nav mesh pathing that you have a nav mesh agent component along with your colliders and whatnot. Now we'll create a movement script for our player, but we'll go back to that later on. On the camera script we created earlier, open up in Visual Studios and we're going to create three variables. The first being a public transform called player, the second being a private vector called camera offset, and the last one being a float for the smoothness of the camera. As you can see, I use the range between 0.01 .01 to 1 that will appear later as a slider in the inspector. This is totally optional. I usually just prefer to have sliders in some cases, just so it's easier to edit. In the start method, all we need to do is set the Vector3 camera offset equal to the camera's position minus the player's position. Going down to the update method, we're going to create a new Vector3 and call it new pause, and have that equal to the player's position in addition to the camera offset. After that, in the new line, we're going to store all the values into a slurp so that it moves along smoothly. That's done by transforming the position of the camera and have that equal to the vector3 slurp, bracket, transform the position, new pause, and smoothness. That's pretty much it for the camera following script. Going back into Unity, just hook up the player prefab into the player spot in the inspector and choose the smoothness setting. When we press play, I'll move the player through the scene so you can see that the camera follows the player wherever they go. Now to make the player actually move, we go to the movement script we created earlier and open it up in Visual Studio. First, we're going to go to the top and add using UnityEngine.ai. After that, the variables we're going to need are navmesh agent and two floats. I just named them agent, rotate speed movement, and rotate velocity. In the start method, we need to establish what the navmesh agent is trying to access, and that's by doing a gameobject.getComponent navmesh agent, which will allow us to call a navmesh agent component from our player prefab. Moving to the update method, for MOBA games they usually use a right mouse button to move, so we'll use an if input.get mouse button down 1, it will shoot a raycast named hit. Then we'll do another check if it hits something, if it does, we'll write another if statement that says if physics.raycast bracket camera.main.screen to point ray bracket input.mouse position, then store the raycast hit and a value. Instead of a value, I'll use mathf.infinity. Now if it does hit something that uses the nav mesh system, we're going to want to get the nav mesh agent which we called agent and have it set destination to be the hit point of where we right clicked. Set destination will allow the player to move towards the terrain as long as it's baked and the player has a nav mesh component. After we've got it to move, we're going to want it to rotate or have it snap to a specific direction on where we're clicking. Let's add a quaternion named rotation to look at and have it equal to quaternion.lookRotation and then we'll store the hit point but minus the game object's transform.position. Then we'll create a float called rotation and have it equal to mathf.smoothdampangle and we'll store the values of transform.eularangles.y, rotation to look at eularangles.y, ref rotate velocity, the rotate speed movement and then times it by time.delta time times 5. Sounds confusing. Lastly, all we need to do is have transform.eula angles equal to a new vector 3 with bracket 0, rotation y, and 0. 
When I go back to the scene and play it, you can see the player is moving towards wherever I am clicking, as well as rotating almost instantly. You can play with the rotation speed movement in the inspector to whatever you're comfortable with. I usually go with 0.075. That is pretty much it for the first episode. In the next episode, we're going to be adding and linking the idle and movement animations, as well as making the camera zoom in and out within a bounds. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.